Alright, straight in. And we have trigger command, so it's always a good idea to use them against someone like Seymour. So, you too seek freedom from this painful life? You talk too much, Seymour. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's use you as one. It is good to see you again, Lady Yuna, but you don't seem pleased. I'll only be pleased when you're gone to the far plane. <laughs> I mean, again, as as we always say, she probably could have sent him while he was giving them that big speech about I'm going to free everyone from from this uh, from this life. It does cost a lot of MP, so Tyus isn't going to have too many shots at it. But so this is not an attack that it regularly uses, and if you notice, everybody lost their haste status. So this guy here, multi-body, when you all have positive status effects, he will use that desperado attack and take it all away from you. The easiest way to defeat this guy is through the use of poison. If you have a poison fang, use it against this guy because he is not immune to poison and he will gradually take poison damage until he dies. So that's an important thing to note. Let's see his attacks. So he's pretty strong, even though he has a ice ward, he's still doing decent damage. And he only casts two at a time, so it's not too big a deal. Pretty good damage, right? If you take this guy's HP away, then he will absorb HP from Seymour, so... But it will do it gradually less, so the first time you kill it, it will take away 4,000 damage, and then 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, and then it will stay at 1,000, so... You need to be wary of that. It has a pretty decent steal. So if you're not protected against that element, it will do a decent amount of damage. There you go. So the next time it will take 3,000 away and not 4,000. So watch out for that. I'm not sure. I don't think it has any resistance. Or maybe it halves everything, we just don't know that. Perhaps. So obviously at this stage you'd want to change to your your second armor that would have the waterproof protection and the fireproof protection. Let's bring in Oren, who has one of the better battle quotes in this game. Yeah, I've got fireproof. I'm just gonna have to bear with the water. Although he was not the man I once knew. Kinok was still my friend, Seymour. You will pay for his death! Oh, yeah. Even I'm feeling pumped up now. Okay. So, if you're struggling, you might want to summon against this uh, against this guy. So now that we have a powerful new Aeon, let's try summoning. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's attack this guy. There is no way to kill that guy, by the way. Death awaits you. Oh. Oh. That's a bit rude. So there you go. Seymour just dismisses your ale. 
So Aeons are not an option against this guy. Which is a little bit annoying. But what you can do, obviously, is um, if you have their overdrive charged, you can just uh, unleash your overdrive and then let him kill it. So it's a cheap but pretty effective way of, uh, of doing it. Okay, so when you drop him below 24,000, he switches into his break phase. So the help text says, cast elemental magic, break, and flare. So once you're below the 24,000, you need to be careful. This is the last time he's going to get to attack. I'm going to put on my stoneproof armor in preparation. Or it's fine. Okay. Alright, let's take him below 24,000. Right, so, now that he's in the break phase, uh, Multibody will use that Shattering Claw attack. So let's assume that, as we can see from the CTB here, um, Seymour gets the first turn and he petrifies someone. Then, boss number one, Multibody will use Shattering Claw. And then, that person will be shattered and they'll be eliminated from the battle. So you really do not want to get petrified. Well, okay, you can get petrified, but you do not want multibody to, to have a turn in between, otherwise you'll be in trouble. Might as well kill them both. Because then multibody can take a little bit of extra HP. If you notice, that overdrive ignored the um, the protect status as well, so that's also useful. So where possible here, you want to break up their turns and make sure they don't get turns back to back. So make use of uh, the attack ranks in order to, to get what you need. Stone Ward is uh, insufficient. It should still, I'm pretty sure it will still uh, put you under stone status anyway. Stone status, petrification. Okay, so now if I don't do anything, this guy is going to use Shattering Claw on Auron, and Auron's going to get shattered and eliminated from the battle. But because it's only one character at a time, you should be able to uh, engineer your turns so that you won't be in trouble. So I don't know if, um, even if Auron was still petrified, whether it would still be random, but. Maybe because we cured the petrification, it, it then randomized the attack because it knew it couldn't shatter it anyway. Okay. Now, what I will do is push it to its third phase. And before I do that, I'm gonna give Auron a little bit of extra protection here. Okay, let's begin the third and final flare phase. Okay, if you have a uh, protect, uh, not protect, a reflect armor, then now will be a good time to equip it because the flare will reflect off you and hit Seymour again. So he'll end up damaging himself, being the smart guy that he is. And that's a good thing to know as well. Here it comes. So against characters with low magic defense like Auron, it will do a good 2,200, 2,300 damage. Not to be underestimated. And from now on, Multibody will use all of its turns to um, to cast Cura on um, on Seymour. So let's poison it as well, actually. Uh, hold on. Okay. 
Obviously now poisoning would work well because it will kind of counteract uh, the cure that uh, the antibody is casting. So for once the bio ability is useful. Again, if you're kind of doing challenges, no sphere grid type stuff, then uh, that's why, again, stealing poison fangs is going to really help you. Let's try and steal another Tetra Elemental. Yeah. Um. I'm just going to see if I can take him out with a with the mix. It's not going to be enough because I don't think I have anything particularly powerful. Um, actually, I'm not going to do anything like that because if you use a multiple hit overdrive, then some of them are going to hit multi-body and it's going to be a kind of a waste. Let's get Titus back in there. Purifying Salt will probably come in handy if uh, the Protector's annoying you. You can always use that. Oh shit, I didn't put Cart. I didn't put Shell on Titus. That was a bad move. I think he's gonna die. Yep. Silly me. For some reason, because I had it in my mind that I was gonna use a Mega Potion, when I changed my mind and decided to use uh, an Albed Potion instead, it kind of messed me up. Oh! I don't think Titus gets any AP now, because <laughs> of that critical hit. Damn. But there you go, there's Seymour Natus. Three distinct stages, and three fairly easy ways to deal with each one. Oh, he's still got, he's still got some. Okay, good. Four, level two, and Shell Bracer. Not bad at all. Depends on the three slots, to be honest. We escaped with our skins intact, but Yuna lost something. I could already tell her faith was shaken. Yevon had betrayed her. I felt like I should do or say something, anything. But nothing came. I was just as lost as she was. And then... And then... Well? We're all clear. We will have to avoid Bevel in the future. Yuna? Said she wanted to be alone. Of course. Okay, let's have a quick chat to everyone and then I'm going to save and end for today. Yuna's off in the woods. Kamari's with her. But maybe you should go too. Oh man, Lulu knows, Lulu knows what's up. Wonder what Uni'll do, huh? Think she'll quit her pilgrimage? That's what you want, right? Well, if Uni really wants to keep going, then I guess I shouldn't stop her. You know? That's what I think, anyway. I think even if her faith is shaken, I think this whole thing has probably motivated her even more to try and, you know, find a solution to all of this. Must be tough for Yuna. Yeah, tough for you as well, man. Maybe you should talk to her. <laughs> Everyone is seriously egging Leave me on. Leave it daybreak. Okay. If Yuna okay, figures out save. where we're going, that is. Okay, are you going to let me say I am tired. Really? I am. I don't think I can save. I feel kind of to... bad. It's not letting me I save. I... Shit! I have to. I... But that's ridiculous. <sighs> oh man, I can't do it. Damn! I need to go. Okay, I need to. I'll have to quickly squeeze this scene in. That's weird. Okay. Yuna's off in the woods, trying to collect her thoughts. I think we should go and have a word. 
maybe this will be Tyus's chance to say the things he wanted to say after finding out about Yuna's fate. Go get her, buddy. I always thought that this would be easier somehow. I thought that everyone would help me, with all my friends together beside me. I've been trying so hard. Maybe... You're trying too hard. They told me... Everything. Everything? Well, so then... You know. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just... You know. All those things I said. Like... Let's go get Sin, or about Xanarkand. I didn't know what would happen to you, Yuna. I guess... I hope it didn't make you sad. Forgive me. I wasn't sad. I was happy. Yuna! Just don't do it! The pilgrimage? Uh, uh, yeah. That's right. Forget all about sin. Uh, about being a summoner. Forget all of that. Mm, you know, live a normal life. Come on now, Yuna, what do you say? Maybe I will. Huh? Huh. Wouldn't everyone be surprised? Yeah. Except Riku. She'd be with you. Lulu and Waka wouldn't hold out long. Kamari would say yes, too, I know. But Sir Oren. I'll make him understand, Yuna. It's the least I can do for you. No. I should tell him. He deserves it. What'll I do if I give up my pilgrimage? Mm. Hey! Xanarkin! Let's go to Xanarkin! Uh? uh, not the one in Spira, the one I'm from. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, we can all fly there. Everyone can go. Then we'll have a big party at my place. And then we could see Blitzball. That's right. Your Xanarkand Aves would play? Yeah. We could all watch you play in the stadium all lit up at night. I'd cheer and cheer till I couldn't cheer anymore. Yeah, right on. Well, what about after the game? Huh? We'd go out and have fun. In the middle of the night? <laughs> no problem. Xanarkand never sleeps. Let's go to the sea, before the sunrise. The city lights go out one by one. The stars fade. 
Then the horizon glows, almost like it's on fire. It's kind of rose-colored, right? First in the sea, then it spreads to the sky, then to the whole city. It gets brighter and brighter till everything glows. It's really pretty. I know you'd like it. Hmm. I'd like to see it someday. Well, you can, Yuna. We can both go. Continue. I must. Mm. If I give up now, I could do anything I wanted to. And yet, even if I was with you, I could never forget. I'll go with you. What? I'm your guardian. Unless I'm fired. <laughs> Stay with me. Until the end. Please. Not until the end. Always. then.
Maybe you should head back to camp first. Roger. Wow, so there we have it. That was the big the big makeout scene between uh Titus and Yuna. And I I've always thought that, that was a really well done scene. It always leaves me with a, a warm feeling after I watch it. I think they just they absolutely nailed that. I mean the dialogue and everything was, was really nice and uh the way the Yuna's theme kicked in slightly as they were talking about, you know, what they do together and then just, you know, the the choreography and the, the environment. I've always said I loved Makalania. And it was the perfect place for something like this to happen, you know, with all of the, you know, the underwater and the glowing kind of crystal pyrefly type stuff. It's a really, you know, fantasy, you know, awesome, awesome FMV. I've always loved it. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was a pivotal scene in the game. You know, this thing's been building up since the beginning and they finally, you know, come together. And even though that bastard Seymour got there first, it was a much more meaningful experience uh, with Titus. But, I mean, you've got to, you've got to commend the... Um, you know, you've got to commend Yuna's resolve. You know, she was kind of, she was kind of, you know, warming to the idea of giving up the whole pilgrimage thing. And then after the whole, you know, the scene with Titus, it was kind of, she's, you know, she's decided even if she was to, you know, give it all up and be with Titus, she'd never be able to, you know, rest easy afterwards. So it still, you know, solidified her, her resolve to continue and keep going with the pilgrimage until the end. So yeah, that was it. The infamous Suteki Dane scene which is a, as a track, you know, it's a great track of itself anyway. But yeah, they're, uh, they're kind of officially an item now. And it's kind of, it kind of creeps me out that Kimari saw the whole thing as well. He probably uh, went back to the rest of the group and just uh, told them all. Titus and Yuna make out. Wait, I'll go with you. I just kept thinking after seeing this, why? Why does she still have to continue the pilgrimage? Everyone, we leave at dawn. And... I'm sorry for putting you through all this. And I'm... Um... Enough. You need your rest. Yes. Good night. So Titus and Yuna are still playing it cool. I think uh, it's, it's going to be one of those things where everyone kind of knows what's going on, but they're not going to really you know, make it obvious. Another lucid ring? Really? I've already got one. And this is confused proof. Yeah. I've already got this, so I don't need it. What is this lady saying? And over there, I don't think there's anything left. Don't think I can pick up anything. But, you know, if you ever want to come and reminisce, 
about that scene, then that, this is the place to do it. And finally, after all that drama, we get to continue the pilgrimage. And we come to probably the most open expanse in the entire game. Calmlands. There is a lot of stuff to do around here, so um, we will have a look at that tomorrow, hopefully, if I can record. As always, thank you guys for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll be back with more very soon. Take care.